Hello, my name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, Applying Border Data and Other Save Options Part 2, Border Data, we will cover the variables we skipped over in the editing and saving your first CINE and performing file conversion tutorials. All the features discussed in this tutorial are optional and are not critical to the saving or converting CINE process. However, they can be extremely useful in many applications. Before I continue, I want to open a different file, the Accelerometer ZYX Samples file. I'm going to quickly define the Save Cine parameters we described in the Editing and Saving Your First Cine and Performing File Conversions tutorials. I'm going to save the file in my C colon Program Files Phantom Cine's Tutorials folder. Save the file in the ProRes file format. Save the entire Cine and I'm also going to set the color interpolation algorithm to best and leave the other options format set to Apple ProRes 422 HQ. Okay, with all my save settings defined, I can move on to the border data feature. PCC allows us to add information about the CINE being saved or converted into a border data outside the CINE. I can add range data measurements, a graph of track points or collect point measurements and or data acquisition measurement sample values and if I want to I can overlay a watermark on the image. Where the sending information is displayed is determined by the style selected. If I select none no border data will be added to the sending being saved. Notice that all the options are grayed out or disabled. However, when I select any of the other styles, all these other areas and options will be active or enabled. The first style, Standard, instructs PCC to place the specified common options below the image area. The second style, Military, places the specified common options to the right of the image and allows me to add a header and footer to the saved file. The next style, car engine places the specified common options above the image area and the specific car engine information below the image area. When include the displayed measurement and signals is enabled or checked, any collect point tracking measurements and or signal range data or data acquisition unit sample values associated with the file will be saved and displayed as a graphic chart to the right of the image area. For this example, I'm going to use the standard style and add the associated data acquisition unit signals graph to the border data. With the style selected, I now need to specify the font size and city information or common options to display in the border. By default, the specified annotation text or border data will be displayed in a font size of 9 points. The size can be changed by selecting the desired size from the font size pull down selection list. PCC allows us to select the time format to display in the border data from the time format pull down selection list, including the no timestamp option that, if selected, PCC will not add any timestamp information to the border data. The absolute time option, when chosen, displays the date and time down to the nanosecond the image was recorded. The From Trigger option will add the time difference of the image being displayed in the image area from the T0 trigger frame. A negative time indicates the image was recorded before the trigger frame, while a positive time represents the image was recorded after the trigger frame. The From Image, along with an Image Number Data Entry field, 
adds the time difference from the image being displayed from the image specified in the from image data entry field. Negative and positive time references are the same as the from trigger references. And the last selection, the from first image option, instructs PCC to calculate and add the time difference between the image being displayed from the first image recorded to the CINE. The file name, when enabled, displays the name of the file or image specified in the file name data entry field in the Save CINE dialog window. The image number displays the image number of the image being displayed in the border data when enabled. The image from first option adds the number of images the image being displayed is from the first image being saved. The camera version option adds the hardware version, the camera model, used to record the file being saved. The acquired resolution option adds the width by height the file was recorded at. The frame rate option adds the frame rate the file was recorded at. The exposure option, when enabled, will display the exposure time the displayed image was recorded at. The EDR exposure adds the EDR, Extreme Dynamic Range Exposure Time, the displayed image was recorded with. The first and last image option will display the first and last image numbers of the images contained within the saved file. The duration option indicates the duration of the saved file. The signals option displays the values of all signals sampled by an attached data acquisition unit for the displayed image. The range data option adds range data information embedded in the file being saved, for example, azimuth or elevation. The last annotation text option is the description option that when enabled will display the description entered in the Play Cine Info description field. For this example, I'm going to leave the font size at 9 points and add the absolute time, file name, image number, camera version, acquired resolution, sample rate, exposure time, duration, and signal values to the border data. To add a watermark to the images being saved, I need to enable or check the display logo enable box. I then need to select an image to be used as the logo by clicking on the dot 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 button next to the logo file name population field and navigate to the folder containing the image to be used as the watermark in this case the C colon program files phantom cines watermark images folder highlight the file to be used for this example the vision research logo JPEG and click the open button Notice PCC displays the path and file name of the image I just selected in the logo file name field. Now to resize, position, and determine if I want to make the watermark transparent or not, I'll click the preview button to open it in my default picture viewer application. Since the watermark is quite large and opaque, I want to reduce its size and make it more transparent. To do this, I'll close the Picture Viewer program and adjust the display logo width and height fields to a width of 320 pixels by a height of 107 pixels and reduce its transparency to half of what it is now by entering 0 0.50 in the Transparency Range Data Entry field. Then check my changes by clicking on the Preview button again. Now I'll move the watermark near the lower right hand corner of the image by entering pixel number 1250 in the X position data entry field and 1060 in the Y position data entry field. And once again I'll click the preview button to review my changes. I would continue making changes as needed until the desired results are achieved. If I wanted to, I could change the size of the border, move the image area and the annotation text by enabling and editing the respective advanced positioning options. The destination resolution will automatically adjust itself 
based on the CINE files resolution, the border data settings, and the annotation text style, landscape or portrait, once the preview button is selected. Notice, with landscape style selected, the annotation text is written horizontally in the border. and the destination resolution is set to a width of 2,272 pixels with a height of 1,248 pixels. Notice, when I change the annotation text style to portrait and click the preview button, notice the text is now displayed vertically and the border data resolution has been increased in height from 1,248 pixels to 1,440 pixels. I could, if I wanted to, make the border or destination resolution even larger if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it as is. And if I wanted to, I could move the annotation text anywhere, even over the image area if I wanted to. Let me demonstrate this for you by changing the annotation text X and Y positions to an arbitrary position of an X position of 200 and a Y position of 200. As you can see, the annotation text has moved to the X and Y position specified, in this case over the image. I'm going to set these parameters back to their original position of X0 and Y 1200. The last piece of the puzzle we need to talk about is the source image position data entry fields. These fields are used to reposition the image area within the specified destination resolution, similar to what I just did when I repositioned the annotation text. To apply the border data settings, I'll click the OK button and start the save process. Once the save process starts, PCC displays a converting message and a progress indicator. I have time lapsed this process for time purposes. Now that the file has been converted and saved, let's review the final product by opening it in QuickTime. Note the images annotation text and graph are all synchronized providing us with not only a qualitative view of the event but also a quantitative view. So that concludes the applying border data and other save options tutorials where we detailed various save options especially adding border data to save files. For in-depth Phantom Operations, Vision Research offers Phantom Operations certification training please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.